There's no denying that Kim Jong-un, the supreme leader of North Korea, rules the mysterious hermit kingdom with an iron fist. But his prickly foreign policies and human rights infractions keep the kingdom's economy incredibly weak. So much so that the average yearly income for a North Korean is a pitiful $1,300. But Kim lives lavishly by hoarding the country's meager assets for himself. From buying watches worth millions to fleets of classic cars and even a supersized party barge, his spending is out of control. So hold your chin up, because I promise your jaw is going to hit the floor when you see what this leader wastes his country's money on. <laughs> Pointless Piano Collection as stiff and stern as he looks, Kim Jong-un actually has a soft side that's particularly fond of music. According to inside reports, the Supreme Leader loves everything musical, from singing karaoke to listening to 80s jams and attending K-pop performances. So much so that he even had his own private 13-piece live band made up exclusively of female violinists. As hard as this obsession is to believe, there's some convincing customs data that supports it. In 2014, it was revealed he'd imported a staggering 36 top-end pianos into the country, along with a lot of high-priced recording equipment. But confusingly, there are no reports to suggest that Kim actually plays the piano. So what did he need that many for? Maybe he was trying to set up another private band made purely of pianists? Or maybe he was arming his soldiers for piano-based warfare? Whatever the reason, it's unlikely these would be anything less than top quality, and considering a top-end concert grand piano can sell for more than $170,000, that 36-strong collection could be worth a staggering $6 million. Whoa, I don't think that's music to anyone's ears. But while Kim's busy tinkling with his many, many ivories, why don't you try tinkling those like and subscribe buttons? I put out brand new content every day that you can enjoy for free, and it won't even cost you a penny. And speaking of pennies, let's look at even more ridiculously expensive things North Korea's supposed supreme leader has bought. Palaces Galore a lot of world leaders have multiple residences, like America's former president Donald Trump, for example. When he was in charge, he had not one, not two, but three part-time residences as well as the White House. As extra as that sounds, it's nothing compared to the number Kim Jong-un owns. According to reports from North Korea Uncovered, there are a phenomenal 14 palaces used exclusively by the Supreme Leader and his family. And just like Kim, they're not small in size. Like this one, known as the Ryongsong Residence, which is Kim's colossal main residence. The entire complex is spread over more than four and a half square miles of Pyongyang's suburbs, encompassing a private train station, a horse racing track, and even three man-made lakes. But less than 20 miles away, he also has another massive mansion known as the Kangdong Residence. Used as a summer retreat, this palace also has three huge man-made lakes and a private train station, along with an elaborate garden and many guest houses. And over on the country, East Coast, another even more lavish compound sits on the seaside. This is the Wonsan residence, and as you can see, it's a little more ostentatious than the other two. Connected to a huge sports stadium and water park, the grounds of this grand complex contain 10 separate villas, a private harbor, a basketball court, and even a theater. And to think, he owns at least 11 more residences like this. While there's no word on how much building and maintaining these compounds costs, the Wonsan compound alone appears to be about 10 acres in size. For perspective, an estate of that size in California would be worth around $18 million. Although I don't reckon real estate in North Korea is as expensive, what with all the, you know, communism. Secret Cinema one thing you can find in almost any millionaire's home is a private movie theater. Kim Jong-un's private theater really takes the cake, or in this case, popcorn. 
According to unconfirmed reports, his father and previous supreme leader Kim Jong-il was utterly obsessed with movies and cinema, so much so that he built a staggering 1,000-seat private theater for him and his close comrades to enjoy. For contrast, a standard movie theater holds around 200 seats, so that has to be one seriously big silver screen. On top of that, the former leader claimed that he owned more than 30,000 VHSs and DVDs of Hollywood blockbusters like Titanic, Gladiator, and Godzilla. With the latest DVD releases costing up to $20, that would mean he owned something like $600,000 worth of movies alone. But since his death in 2011, Kim Jong-un has probably added to his father's expensive collection, considering Netflix isn't available in North Korea. But whatever he's watching, I don't reckon classic titles like The Interview or Team America will be in his library. Hiring the Harlem Globetrotters While his father might have had a love of cinema, Kim's passion lies out on the basketball court. He loves watching the game so much that in 2019, he demanded that the U.S. send famous basketball players to North Korea as part of a proposed denuclearization deal. He claimed it was to normalize relations between the two countries, but it was probably because of Kim's passion with the sport, seeing how most of his mansions have a court or two in them. Though Kim's obsession reached an expensive peak back in 2013, when he invited world-famous ballers the Harlem Globetrotters to play an exhibition game against North Korea's national team. In one of the most bizarre basketball games ever to grace a court, the team somehow ended the match in a 1-10-1-10 tie. While this super strange basketball diplomacy filled up Kim's stadium, it helped empty his bank account. The standard fee for an appearance from the Globetrotters in the US is a staggering $75,000, but that price doesn't include flights, accommodation, or throwing a game to make a nation look good. So how much extra do you think Kim paid to persuade the Globetrotters to settle on a draw? Let me know down in the comments. All aboard the money train. When it comes to traveling across the closed off kingdom, the Kim dynasty has always relied on rails. You see, Kim Jong un's father, Kim Jong il, had a mortal fear of flying. So instead of taking to the skies, he demanded 90 luxury train cars to suit all his long haul needs. These included a dedicated dining car, colossal conference car, several saloons, and even kitchens equipped to serve anything from Japanese to French cuisine. His son, of course, inherited it and has since renovated it at the cost of his country. One car, for example, is now lined with rows of plush pink leather seats, and his father's old conference carriage has been decked out with modern white paneling. Each car is completely bulletproof, making them thousands of pounds heavier than the average carriage. And this additional weight means that with 21 cars, it can reach a maximum speed of just 37 miles per hour. Despite its snail's pace, Kim uses it to visit factories all around the country, where he ironically takes propaganda photos to show the supposed wealth of the nation. And it looks like he really enjoyed watching at all the lubricant this factory squeezes out. But he doesn't just visit factories, because there are also around 20 private train stations dotted across the country that only the Supreme Leader's train is permitted to use. But how much does this rolling behemoth really cost? Well, a single standard train carriage can cost upwards of $1.5 million to build. And seeing how Kim has 90 armor-clad, customized carriages at his disposal, that could make his train worth more than $100 35 million dollars. Well, if he's looking to drive North Korea's economy down even further, then he's definitely on the right track. The Mile High Life Unlike his flight-phobic father, Kim Jong-un has no problem taking to the skies, as proven by not just one, but two of his private planes. On the rare occasion that he's left the confines of North Korea, this leader has arrived in one of two Ilyushin Il-62M aircraft decked out in VIP government livery. 
When these were designed back in 1963, they were the largest jetliners of their kind at nearly 175 feet long. Although the Soviet-era planes actually went out of production in 1995, that hasn't stopped Kim from refurbishing both aircraft for his personal use. But refits aside, these prehistoric planes are still very expensive to procure. Along with the cost of a suitably sized hangar and maintenance, they can each cost a whopping $50 million. Now, admittedly, that's nothing compared to America's new Air Force One model planes. Along with their hangars and maintenance, these two presidential sky palaces will cost a staggering $5.3 billion. But considering 19 presidents of the United States, from Roosevelt to Trump, made a staggering 765 international trips while in office, these presidential planes certainly get a lot of use. But since Kim Jong Kong Un came to power in 2011, he's made just nine trips to foreign countries. So, $50 million per plane is some serious overkill. Though I do wonder if he calls them Air Force Un. Pricey Petrol Head now, whenever Kim really wants to arrive in style, he pulls up in one of his magnificent Mercedes-Benz Pullman limos. Top-of-the-line Mercedes limos like these are popular with many world leaders, not just because they look professional, but because they're also bulletproof. And at nearly $1.6 million each, you'd hope even the hubcaps could stop a bullet or two. But Kim's possession of the luxury limos is actually a massive violation of international sanctions against North Korea. These sanctions were put in place by the United Nations on imported luxury goods more than a decade ago, all in an attempt to suppress Kim's quest for nuclear weapons. But Kim clearly found a way to skirt those sanctions in order to fuel his car collecting habits, because it's not just limos he's illegally imported. Reports have surfaced that he also owns a fleet of more than 100 luxury cars. According to customs data and photographs, these include a $162,000 Audi R8, a $100,000 Range Rover, and an astonishing armored Rolls-Royce Phantom that cost more than $500,000. Like that wasn't defiant enough, he brazenly drove that half-a-million-dollar Phantom to his meeting with Mike Pompeo the former director of the CIA. Now that, kids, is what you call a massive flex. Boastful Boats When Kim's not lavishly traveling by plane, train, or automobile, he takes to the sea in style. Back in 2013, Kim and his top generals were spotted disembarking from a huge 95-foot yacht during a visit to a fishery station. But this wasn't just any yacht, it was a luxury 95MY princess yacht. This was a top-of-the-line British motor vessel comprised of three huge decks, kitted out with a sizable saloon, dining area, a full kitchen, and even four bedrooms. But all that seafaring space came at an eye-watering $7 million. Although that's not the only boat he owns. Satellite images of the Hermit Kingdom reveal that just outside of his previously mentioned Wonsan compound, there's at least one more absolutely massive yacht in the docks. At about 100 feet long, it's roughly the same size as the Princess Yacht, meaning it's also probably worth upwards of $7 million. But it's not just yachts in Kim's dock. I mean, just look at that massive monstrosity. Believe it or not, this is Kim Jong-un's private 200-foot-long multi-story pool party barge. According to witnesses, it contains an Olympic-length swimming pool, which at its top end has spiraling water slides as well as a massive backstage lounge. Satellite data shows this floating amusement park has been renovated over the years and was even spotted floating off the coast of Tay Island for a whole month in 2018. Considering Kim disappears from the media spotlight for months at a time, it makes you wonder if he's hard at work or hardly working. But how much does it cost? Well, for contrast, this huge 120-foot tiki barge was put up for sale for a wallet-busting $1 million back in 2015. 
So considering Kim's barge is nearly twice the size of that, it must be a multi-million dollar floater. Footing the food bill. It's pretty clear that Kim Jong-un is a big fan of his food. But in 2019, following the Hanoi summit that Kim attended, a chef revealed something shocking about this leader's diet. Not only had Kim flown his own chefs and servers in, but they'd prepared him a gut-busting amount of the finest caviar, lobster, wagyu beef, and foie gras money could buy. Clearly, he's developed a taste for the finer things in life. But fancy foie gras can cost up to $90 per pound, whereas high-grade Wagyu beef can reach up to $200 per pound. As for caviar and lobster, both of these delicious luxury items are actually banned from North Korea because of, you guessed it, international sanctions. But that clearly hasn't stopped Kim Jong-un from eating whatever he wants, whenever he wants. And when he's not busy chowing down on international delicacies, he's importing them in. In 2016, he reportedly ordered almost $67,000 worth of expensive cheeses from Italy alone. But most of his poverty-stricken country relies on food rations, which were reported to be just 300 grams of food a day back in 2019. That's less than what an average preschooler eats. So it seems unlikely that Kim has been sharing any of his dairy. In fact, his unending love of imported cheese fueled a rumor in 2014 that he'd gotten so fat, both his ankles suddenly fractured under his own weight. After that, maybe they should consider changing this supreme leader's name to Kim Jong Um Nom Nom. Big on Beverages to wash all that fine food down, Kim makes sure to order in plenty of beverages that are fit for a king. In 2016 alone, he reportedly imported almost $1 million worth of fine Brazilian coffee. But while Kim was slurping down hot cups of quality joe, around 50% of North Korea's rural population didn't even have access to drinking water. And to make matters worse, it isn't just coffee this insatiable leader wastes his country's money on. You see, Kim loves an expensive alcoholic beverage or two. In fact, he claimed that he once drank 10 bottles of France's famous Bordeaux in a single evening. Considering quality Bordeaux can cost more than $1,000 per bottle, I hope that $10,000 nightcap really knocked him out. But in 2016, Kim blew more than $45,000 on illicitly imported U.S. liquor for him and his closest comrades. While he's not always had a great relationship with the U.S., that doesn't seem to have stopped his love of stateside spirits. Though it's not just the U.S. he's been buying from. In 2016 alone, he imported more than $1 million of alcohol from around the world. That's a lot, considering 2.8 million North Koreans at the time were struggling to afford food. Although, as you probably guessed, premium alcohol is considered a luxury item and is illegal to import to North Korea under UN regulations. But despite the strictness of those sanctions, North Korea found a way around them. In 2017, it's reported that Kim spent more than a staggering $35 million illegally importing lavish international liquor for his elite comrades to enjoy. That's enough to leave anyone seeing double. High-Priced Horses now, it's not just Russian President Vladimir Putin who likes to pose for photos on the back of a horse. Kim Jong-un also has a penchant for posing with ponies. Although, thankfully, he likes to do it with his shirt on. But for this particular photo shoot, Kim didn't want to skimp on any expenses. He spent a staggering $75,000 on 12 purebred horses from Russia, all to appear like the very vision of fitness to the citizens of North Korea. And that was just one photo shoot. Between 2010 and 2019, customs data shows Kim imported at least 138 horses from Russia for a monumental $584,000. Emphasis on the mental. 
but while Kim's busy horsing around, he's probably oblivious to the fact that his $75,000 photoshoot alone cost the same as an entire year's salary for 60 North Koreans. I don't know about you, but I think he needs to rein in his horsey hijinks. Wasteful Watches when Kim steps out onto the world stage, he's usually drably dressed in a dark button-up suit with his face perfectly accentuated by that super square haircut. But as plain as he looks, there's something a little more lavish strapped to his wrist. On more than one occasion, this supreme leader has been clocked wearing some seriously fine Swiss timepieces. Like here, when he was watching a missile test wearing an IWC Portofino automatic wristwatch, which costs almost $14,000. And here, at yet another missile test launch, he was wearing a very fancy Movado Museum timepiece. Just two years after taking control of the country, Kim's spending on Swiss watches increased almost fourfold from about 64,000 in 2010 to over 230,000 in 2012. However, in 2016, after falling afoul of even more UN sanctions, the Swiss government put a stop to all luxury watch exports to North Korea. But apparently, the ban didn't stop Kim from illegally importing around 100 brand new Rolexes as gifts for his elite party members in December 2016. With many high-end Rolexes costing around $10,000, Kim might have spent upwards of $1 million on these gifts alone. As disputable as it sounds, no one is denying that this supreme leader spends big on his own watch collection, which some believe to be worth an enormous $8.2 million. What a literal waste of time. Living the High Wife while Kim isn't afraid to live large in more ways than one, his wife, Ri Sol Ju, definitely isn't slumming it either. Kim keeps her decked out in all the finest fashions, and in recent years, she's appeared at a press event and international meetings dressed in more and more Western styles, with a few designer items to match. Like here, where she sported a Dior clutch bag, which cost an incredible $1,600. She's also been spotted with several others thought to be worth more than $1,500 apiece. Now, that doesn't exactly sound like much in contrast to what Kim spends on horses, watches, and even cheese, but just one of her handbags costs about the same as a North Korean citizen's yearly salary, and her lavish lifestyle has actually made her unpopular with the people. I mean, they say a happy wife means a happy life, but is it really worth the respect of an entire nation? Pleasure Squad Necessities Despite having a pretty and pricey wife, Kim Jong-un is not a monogamous man. Since the days of his equally corrupt grandfather, Kim Il-sung, this ruling family has had a group of ladies, known unnervingly as a pleasure squad, on standby. These pretty women are hand-picked from the population to entertain the supreme leader and his comrades by singing, dancing, and other more, uh, exotic acts. Having a harem like this sounds made up, but considering Kim Jong-un himself is the son of one of his father's many mistresses, it sadly makes sense. But keeping a high-profile harem doesn't come without its expenses. In 2016 alone, it was reported that the supreme leader spent an eye-watering $3.5 million on lingerie for all the women in his life. Maybe we should start calling him Kim Thong-un instead? Although I'm not sure how true this claim is. Even in the West, the most expensive lingerie only reaches about $1,000 per cent. So, unless he bought a ridiculous 3,500 spicy sets, that claim doesn't quite add up. Although it would if his harem consisted of more than 2,000 women, which some media outlets actually claim is the case. However, some reports state that this racy $3.5 million spend also included... <laughs> Costumes. Well, let's pretend, for the sake of all our innocent minds, that this is just some kind of super impressive cosplay. Longevity and libido? 
Now that we know Kim isn't in short supply of women, the pressure to produce an heir who will inherit this incredibly corrupt kingdom sits squarely on his massive shoulders. While there are unconfirmed rumors that he has three children with Ri Sol Ju, one of whom might be a boy, that's not enough for this supreme leader. After all, Kim Jong-un was not the oldest of his male siblings when he was named heir of the Hermit Kingdom. The title passed over the heads of his two other brothers, Kim Jong-chol and Kim Jong-nam, who were deemed unfit to rule by their father. So, Kim Jong-il has to ensure that he has enough heirs to choose from when his time comes to pass on the leadership and assets of the kingdom. But how does he do this? Well, according to one North Korean defector, the Kim family owns a private life longevity center made up of a whopping 130 of the nation's top scientists. Their only job is to ensure the health and happiness of the Kim family to keep them alive for as long as possible. Day and night, these scientists work on everything from improving the tenderness of Kim's beef to replicating the leader's favorite Western brand of cigarette. Not only that, but the center was also tasked with creating strong aphrodisiacs for the supreme leaders, made from illegally poached substances like seal and even lion genitals. I'm sorry, but if Kim Jong-un can secretly import lion junk into the country, wouldn't getting his hands on a couple of bulge-inducing blue pills really be so hard? While there's no word on just how much this all costs, a single scientist of this type earns an average yearly salary of about $80,000 in the US. And with 130 at his beck and call, that's at least $10.4 million in healthcare a year just for one family. Although it still sounds cheaper than an American medical bill. Which of Kim's spends do you think was the most extravagant? And which one do you secretly wish you owned yourself? Providing it didn't come at the cost of robbing an entire nation blind, of course. Let me know down in the comments below, and thanks for watching.